Hello, and welcome back to the Balanced Blonde Podcast, Soul on Fire. I'm your host, Jordan Younger. And today we have my dear friend and my old friend from the blogging, from the OG blogging days, Jessica Murnan. You may know her from her podcast, One Part Plant, which fun fact is the first podcast that I ever went on, or from her healthy cookbook, also called One Part Plant, or her most recent book, Know Your Endo, which is all about endometriosis, how to spot it, how to treat it, and Jessica's experience living with endometriosis and all the ways that it has impacted her life. And it is full of so many good juicy tips, even for someone like me who does not suffer from endometriosis, but does suffer from a chronic illness. I just related to so much of what she shares about in the book. And as she says in this interview, it is such an amazing book to gift to any friend who's suffering from endometriosis to show them that they're not alone. You see them, you hear them, you understand them and their pain. And it's just an important book for women to read, women and men, honestly, to understand what's going on in the female body when it comes to endometriosis. And beyond that topic, Jessica and I share a love of reality TV, Bravo shows, Real Housewives, and beyond. And we talk about that in this episode. We also share a literary agent, the beautiful Sarah, who was, I believe, the fourth or fifth guest on my podcast. If you want to go back and listen to that, it's so old. I cannot guarantee that the audio quality is going to be good or what we talked about, but that would give you some insight into Sarah because we do talk about Sarah in this episode. Shout out to Sarah. And beyond everything else that I mentioned, Jessica is an author, a speaker, and a creative consultant. And something that I really love that we talked about both on this podcast and off air, because we talked for a while before and after the interview, is that she is making some changes in her life right now. She recently stopped doing her podcast and she's looking into going more of the book writing direction, potentially fiction. She also says some other fun stuff in this conversation that she would like to start doing. And I just think it's so cool and so brave to change and to be in the public eye for 10 plus years as a blogger in a specific space as a healthy food blogger, podcaster, cookbook author, someone who talks about chronic illness, et cetera. I just think it's so brave and so courageous to start to do something else or to even create space to do something else. So it's a trend that I've noticed among many of my friends who have been in this industry for about a decade, as Jessica and I both have, that sometimes your soul just wants to do more and there's no shame in that. I think it's so cool. And I think a lot of us get really trapped in thinking if we're successful, we have to stay doing what we're doing. And if we don't, then who even are we? And have some kind of identity shift. Something similar that we talked about in a recent episode with my friend Brandon Cohen, who recently stepped down as the CEO of Liquid IV. And I'm just really interested in those conversations right now and really inspired. So I know that you'll love this conversation with Jessica. And before we get into this chat, I would love to thank our first sponsor for today's show, Pure Synergy. First of all, you should know you can use the code BLONDE20 at checkout for 20% off of your purchase, which is such a good deal for all of these amazing high quality organic supplements. So let me tell you a little bit about Pure Synergy and then I'll tell you about some of my favorite products of theirs. So Pure Synergy is your resource for organic, sustainable wellness. They provide the most pure and potent vitamins, superfoods, and herbal extracts made with organic ingredients without any chemical additives, fillers, or solvents. With Pure Synergy products, you'll feel so good about what you're putting in your body and also how it impacts the planet. So those are a couple of the things that we're really passionate here at TBB about. And every brand I work with goes through a very rigorous selection process to become TBB approved. And I can guarantee you that Pure Synergy meets all of those guidelines and then some. They believe that everyone deserves to be well in mind, body, and spirit, a holistic health philosophy. And they want to empower you to stay well because wellness is for everyone. They want to empower all of us to be our best self 
And when you take Pure Synergy products, you radiate health from the inside out. So I want to tell you about a couple of my favorite products of theirs that I've been really into lately. I think a lot of you know that I love their barley grass juice powder. That's something that I put into my smoothie every day with banana, cucumber, plant protein, spirulina, and then that barley grass juice powder. Everybody always asks me how my smoothies get so green and bright. And everybody says, are you using a filter? How is your smoothie that green and bright and beautiful and mermaid looking? And that is Pure Synergy's Barley Grass Juice Powder. I am such a fan of it. I also love their Super B Complex for all the B vitamins. I love their Pure Synergy Superfood and their D3 and K2 Complex. So many of us are deficient in vitamin D, which I think a lot of people don't really realize. And it's a really, really important thing to note. So I love that D3 and K2 Complex. And super noteworthy is the Pure Synergy Organic Superfood, which is their flagship product, which took seven years to perfect. Their founder collaborated with traditional healers of multiple global disciplines, herbalists, nutritionists, naturopaths, Chinese medicine doctors, Ayurvedic practitioners, and Western medical doctors, all to create this comprehensive formula. So as you can imagine, it is full of the good stuff. It also tastes amazing. And I highly, highly recommend that product, which is their organic superfood. They never use synthetic ingredients. They have no natural flavors, quote unquote. We do not like natural flavors, no natural sweeteners, artificial flavors, etc. Everything is completely natural. Everything is a very natural process. Their vitamins are whole food based and fermented. So they're easily easily absorbed just like food. And all of their products are manufactured in their award-winning wind-powered certified organic facility in Utah. They make everything themselves. So they have a very personal hands-on approach to everything that they do. And just a reminder, you can shop at the synergycompany.com and use the code blonde20 for 20% off. That is the synergycompany.com blonde20 for 20% off. And that will also be in the show notes. So we're going to get into this episode now. And the final thing I want to say here is I'm so excited to host my first and only live event of 2021, which is the intro to the Celestial Lifestyle and the Celestial Diet Workshop that is happening this Thursday, May 27th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And to join, all you have to do is click the link in the show notes, input your information, which is just your email. And I promise you will not get any annoying emails from me. All you will get is the link to the fabulous workshop. It's completely free. I'm so excited about it and I hope to see you there. Now, without further chit chat, let's get into this episode with Jessica Mernan. I am so happy that you're here. I've been reading your book all week and oh, thanks of so many gems, so much wisdom all about endometriosis. Yeah. And it's it's been cool for me to learn about it because I have a lot of friends with endometriosis and I don't think I have it, although I relate to <laughs> plenty of the symptoms. So we can get into all that. But before we do, let's just start by having you introduce yourself to the audience. You were one of my first guests but it's been about <laughs> five years. So maybe you know, you, know, you know, what's wild is, is I was thinking, oh, I want to be on Jordan's podcast again, but I don't want to ask her. And I was like, and then I realized today, I'm like, it's been five years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> It feels like it was yesterday. <laughs> I know. I remember <laughs> on my couch in my old apartment, it was like 2016. And yeah. oh, being on your podcast, even before that, before I even really knew what podcasts were. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you were one of my first guests too. So I'm Jessica Renan. I wrote the book, One Part Plant, and my new book is called Know Your Endo. I don't know. It's weird to introduce yourself, right? I feel like I do lots of different things. Yeah, you do. But right now, my focus is really raising more awareness for endo and getting this book out to as many people as possible. Yes. And when did the book come out exactly? Two week, two or three weeks ago, April 27th. 
Congratulations. Yeah. It's such Thanks. a big time to birth a book into the world. It's like very underestimated for people who haven't written books and launched them. It's a whole creation process. Oh my gosh, Jordan. And I mean, I wrote this book in like the heat, the heart, whatever you want to call it of COVID. And uh, yeah, I had to get some extensions. I wrote it homeschooling. And it, it was interesting because I know you've written a book and and you kind of wonder how the time that we are living in shaped the book and if it would have been different if I wrote it at a different time. Mm -hmm. But I think that, I think, I don't know, I think everything that was going on just sort of reinforced what is the big premise of the book is creating management tools that you can do at home. Because I think that so many of the management tools that we see online, which I think are great if people can afford, you know, very expensive spas and retreats and things, but that's not accessible for everyone, whether it's where they live or their budget. So I don't know, writing it during COVID, I don't know, it kind of reinforced these principles of, of things that you can do at home. Yeah, no, that makes so much sense to me. I think all the books written during that COVID time have a perspective that's so different, that's so based upon a lot of what we learned in 2020, which was, it's a different world than when we both wrote our first books a few years ago now, many years ago. Yeah. And it's hard because you don't, you know, I didn't write anything about COVID in the book because A, I didn't want to necessarily date it, but B, I don't know. I I wanted people to be focused on what they were reading as opposed to maybe having some trauma come up or reliving that time. Cause I don't, I mean, we're still in it. Like I was watching that show. It's called like whatever. It's like that new Mark Wahlberg show that's on HBO max. And I was like really into it. It's about his businesses. It's a little bit cheesy, but it's kind of fun. And then all of a sudden it was like March 17th and it, it made my heart race I know. And then all of a sudden I was watching, it felt like a very different show that I was watching. It wasn't really an escape anymore. It was kind of tapping into what is still our reality in some ways. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I feel that my quarantine binge watching show was This Is Us. I don't know if you've ever- Okay. That's a very intense show to watch. I know, but my husband and I got ridiculously into it. I mean, these people were Uh my friends, my family, like we watched like 10 (laughs) episodes a day. And now that we're caught up and they have recent episodes all Mm -hmm. about COVID and everything that was going on in the world and the really challenging conversations taking place, I was so triggered. And so I was like, this has been my escape for so long. And now we're in the present day. I didn't think this was ever going to happen. So I definitely hear what you're saying. And I know we're both Bravo fans, big housewives (laughs) fans and all those franchises, you know, similar if they were filming, which most of them did film last year, that happened. But the the difference with them is, is most of them didn't give a shit about COVID. So it didn't really (laughs) impact their parties. (laughs) You don't really see a lot of them wearing masks. I mean, the Atlanta women are getting wild with strippers. So Mm -hmm. it still kind of feels like a little bit of an escape with uh, the housewives. It does. It does. (laughs) And somehow a lot of them were filmed right before and then they came out during, which was cool. So that was still the escape. Well, since we are talking about Bravo and we have a lot of Bravo fans (laughs) on the podcast, I don't get to talk about this with a lot of guests. Uh, What's your favorite franchise? Oh my gosh. Okay. This is so hard because it's what is the most drama versus who do you like most, right? Like, because I've played this game before with many friends. It's like, who would you most want to be roommates with versus who do you like watching on TV? So like, I would love to be roommates with maybe a Porsche, although the new controversy around Porsche is wild. Oh, I don't know about it. Okay. I feel like you should look it up. I will. Oh, I totally. Okay. Okay. Well, she's linked up with someone else's husband. Oh, wow. (laughs) You you like see their first meeting, whatever you look it up. So Atlanta is amazing, but then gosh, 
Potomac is, it's, it's like choosing my favorite child. I'm having a really hard time. The only one I will not watch is the OC. I've been into OC since the beginning. So it's just, it's always been one of the ones that I gravitate toward. Yeah. And you know, what's I'll also say is, is I don't know if you're a Southern charm person, but Southern I charm, it. I know I would love it. I would highly recommend the last season, even if you were just to watch the reunion as like a stepping stone into it. It's, um, it's fabulous. It's kind of what I did instead of OC. Oh, okay. Okay. I could get into that. <laughs> I think my mom's really into it. My favorites are New York uh-huh. and Beverly Cla- Hills. Yeah. I mean, and oh my gosh, this coming season with Erica Jane. I can't wait. Because, because when I watch that trailer, it's, I just feel like she's lying through her teeth. Mm-hmm. Have I you seen the trailer? Lying. Oh yeah. I've seen the trailer. <laughs> I feel that way too. And I don't know if she's just trying to protect Tom at that point or what, but I can't wait. To- I don't think she's, I don't think she's protecting anyone but herself. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> well, I can't wait. I think that comes out really soon. Right. Within- and one, yeah. It's coming out very soon. And let me tell you, Garcelle, best edition. The her reunion look with oh, that y- amazing. Oh my god, she just I don't know. I think she just brings some like level headedness to to the whole franchise of of that. I don't know. She's amazing. Yeah, so, yes. she's very real. I love the way that she'll just say anything, but in a different way than the rest of them. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. And by the way, Sarah reps her now. Oh my god, no way! Is she writing a book? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I just know that she's, yeah. One of her new clients. So love it. (laughs) Speaking of that, that's how we met. We have the same agent and Sarah's Sarah's amazing. She's believed in both of us since day one before we had a book or anything. And I think that's so valuable to find. I know I keep on, I always kind of message her. I'm like, remember I was your first client. Because now she's yes. like getting all these celebs and stuff. I'm like, remember where you came from? Remember where you came from? Yeah, you were the first. I think I was the second. Yeah. Maybe, the, maybe the third. Yeah, and I think that's the thing is I think that whenever anyone asks me about getting an agent, I mean, Sarah took a chance on me and I took a chance on her. I think sometimes, I think we look for the ultimate big agent, but I think sometimes, you know, we can start where we are and take a chance on someone and it worked out. Yeah. Well, exactly. Because she was at the beginning of her career and we were most likely, you know, more, more so at the beginning of our career and she has risen and that has been awesome to see. And so we, we got, I don't want to say lucky, but we believed in a very wonderful person. And then she, you know, she believed in us. Yeah. And then she blew up. So yeah. Oh yeah. Now she reps logic who my husband is the <laughs> biggest logic fan. Sarah knows this. She'll like send us stuff about him because he loves him. The rapper. Yeah. Yeah. And she, um, Nico hottie from oh, yeah, younger. Mm-hmm. I mean that talk about another show. That's my obsession is younger. If, and I don't know if you're a younger fan, but I feel like your listeners probably, have you never watched younger? I've never seen it, but I should watch <gasps> it. Everybody tells me about it also because it's my last name. And so when I see it on the big billboard, I'm like, Ooh, I like this. I really need to get into this. Oh my gosh. Okay. So if you, if your listeners do not know the premise, I'll just give it to you briefly. A woman that is 40 years old, her husband sort of gambles all of their money away. They get a divorce and she's not able to get a job because they feel like 40 is too, too old, which it's absolutely not. So she pretends to be a 26 year old and she gets a job at a publishing at an, at an agency, a book agency. And then she has to pretend like she's a 26 year old for like the rest of the show. It's oh, wow. so amazing. It's Darren star. So there's amazing clothes. It's just, I personally like this is us is just way too sad for me to watch. Like I'm sort of like in the younger world, okay. like it needs to be happy. <laughs> Like, I can't cry. I cry. I feel like I cry enough in my own personal life, like writing books and researching. It's like, I, I can't cry when I watch TV. 
I get that. Well, that's why I love Bravo because it's such an escape and it, it feels like zoning out to me versus like the intensity of what, what I do every day. And it feels like that's kind of what you're saying to the emotional yes. intensity. But I also really like um, emotional shows. I like disturbing shows. So I'm all over the really? board. Really? You're I a do. disturbing show person. I've always like, liked disturbing. Like shows. true crime kind of situation? Yeah. Oh yeah. Serial <gasps> killer. Like my husband <gasps> joke that like every serial killer show I've seen. And I used to love horror when I was younger. I was a huge horror fan. Now I don't because now it scares me to a different level. And I don't like to think about it. Like when I'm going to sleep, uh-huh. but yeah. Mm-hmm. That is so surprising because I feel like for my stress management, I can't watch anything that feels sad or scary. Mm-hmm. And it's cool that you can sort of compartmentalize those things. Yeah. It still feels like an escape to me, like storytelling, uh-huh. but I have gotten more that way. The, the old, the more I grow, the older I get, the uh-huh. more I feel inclined to watch happy, lighthearted things. And that's, that's how I felt lately. So I really, mm-hmm. I do relate to what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if any of your audience is listening and wants to uh, DM me for my nice show list, I've got a very long one. Oh yeah. Do it. That's amazing. (laughs) That's amazing. So your book, back to your book, when I was reading it, I thought it was so cool because I don't feel like I've never read a book that is for people with endometriosis. And I'm sure that there are not that many out there And it was really cool to read because it just felt so much like you're giving a voice to people who are really suffering with something and with so many practical tips. I mean, I got so many questions answered in your book. So, oh, thanks. Yeah. So did you not, did you feel like you were filling a gap there about books of that genre? Yeah. I mean, I think... I definitely think there's a great book called Beating Endo. There's a book called The Doctor Will See You Now. Both of those are written from a doctor's perspective and also from people that didn't have endo. So I really did want to write the book from the perspective of someone that does have endo and you've read it so you will know it's not, you know, a memoir or just all my personal stories. There's a ton of different stories, but there's also a lot of research that is packed into it because I think that that was important to me is, you know, we talk a lot about how endometriosis is a full body condition and it can impact relationships and careers, but that's, you know, something I think that we hear, but to actually see the research of how it's impacting people's careers and relationships, their mental health, their sexual health, it was it were, it was things that I knew, but to see it actually studied and researched was, was really shocking to me, the, the stats that I was finding. So I I think it was, it was important to me to not just include that research, but this isn't just in my head. Like this is, there's actual research that shows that this can impact all of my life. Mm -hmm. So, so much of this book to me is helping people feel less alone, helping them feel seen and just saying that you're not, this is not in your head. And I know that you went through a lot of that with your own health journey of, you know, people saying that you made it up or people questioning you or doctor saying, we don't know what it is. And that can be a very lonely place to live. Absolutely. Yeah. I've totally been through it and reading your book, I definitely for the first time learned what a lot of the symptoms of endo are and realized how much they affect every area of life from fertility to how you feel every day to maybe not being able to get out of bed. And then it impacts your social life, which I totally understand to literally GI issues. I mean, GI issues, like 90% of people with endo have GI issues. That is a huge statistic. Yeah. The mental health component of endo, you know, I shared in the book that there was a study that the BBC did that they interviewed 13 and a half thousand people with endo and nearly half of them said that they had suicidal thoughts. That is a huge and significant number. So yeah. So, so we have fatigue, painful sex, painful urination, painful diarrhea, constipation, GI issues, 
infertility that you mentioned, which a lot of people with endo can still have kids and painful periods. And I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions is we think if you have heard of endometriosis, which it's lucky if you have, we automatically assume that that hallmark classic symptom is painful periods, but not everyone with endo has painful periods. So I think it's important to recognize because I think in the endo community, we definitely see a lot of people suffering with painful periods. And then if someone's not experiencing that, they're like, well, I guess I don't have it as bad, but maybe their fatigue is worse, or maybe they have horrific GI symptoms. I think it's so easy to compare our pain to others. And then it makes us in a way dismiss it or just diminish it. And we can't do that. Absolutely. That reminds me of Lyme too. Although I don't want to bring everything back around to Lyme. It's so similar in that way. And that's why it can be so confusing to get a diagnosis for people is that you're saying with endometriosis, some people have these symptoms, some people don't, but some people Mm -hmm. have other symptoms. And that's what I found with Lyme. That's why I didn't know I had it for so long. I only knew maybe two people that were famous that had Lyme, Yolanda Mm -hmm. Hadid being one of them. Right. Uh, we didn't have that many of the same symptoms. So how would I ever think, oh, that sounds like me. That sounds like something that I am going through until I read her book. And then I realized, okay, we do have a ton of the same symptoms. And I think it's so beautiful in your book that people will pick it up and many people will realize for the first time that they have this and they'll have a name for what they're going through. Yeah. And I think, I don't know if you did this with your, with your line, but I think another big part of the book in the, in the section about symptoms is that we connect so many of our symptoms to our self-worth or who we are, our identity. So for instance, I mentioned the book, I used to pee my pants a lot. So I thought I was kind of a gross person. I didn't know that that was a symptom of endo, this, this urination frequency and urgency and fatigue. A lot of people with endo that have fatigue and don't know it's a symptom. They think that they're lazy or unmotivated. So we start to create these stories about ourselves based on our symptoms. And it's so important to separate. This is me. And this is my endo because you are not your endo. Absolutely. That's so important. And for any illness, anything that any of us suffer from, it's so important to remember that we are separate from that. We are not defined by that. And I really feel it's so liberating to to disconnect ourselves as much as possible from feeling so tied. Yeah. And you know, what's difficult is is when you write a 70,000 word book on endo, I will say that writing it I feel like I had a lot of peace with my endo before writing the book. And I think writing it brought up a lot of anger and sadness and resentment. And and it really made me remember and recognize that I can't put all of my energy into focusing on my endo. Like, because that's what I used to do. And I don't think that's bad. But when I was trying to get better and trying to manage it, it's, it was my focus day and night, 24 seven. And then I sort of stepped away from that because then my management practices just became part of my life. And then diving in and writing it again and writing about it and writing about other people's stories, a lot of it started to come to the surface. So, you know, I love doing all these podcast interviews and all these Instagram lives, but I'm also kind of looking forward to June. I'm going to kind of take a break again from thinking and talking about endo so much just for, you know, a month, because I I feel like I need to kind of get back to being a little bit more at peace with it. I think that's so important. And I can speak from experience with that. And when you asked me before we started recording, are you writing another book anytime soon? That's one reason why it took, why I hadn't started a book because I wanted to make sure I was in a place if I was going to write about chronic illness at all, mm-hmm. that I could be separated enough from it, that it, that it could be not just a chronic illness book, because for me, reliving all that, like you're saying is, is so much, but you also have to know, as I know that you do know that you're doing a huge service to the world by talking about it. And then you'll yeah. get your, you'll get your much deserved break very soon. <laughs> yeah. And I, and that's the thing is I love it so much, but I think 
not, I love endo so much. I love talking about it so much and raising awareness, but I think, you know, so much of the book is about checking in with yourself and saying, Hey, how's the mental health going? How are you managing everything? And, you know, the past couple of weeks, I've kind of realized it's like, wow, this has brought up some stuff that I might have not completely processed because I think with a chronic condition, you get so good at pushing through and pushing down and getting through it that sometimes you don't exactly process everything in in the process of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, (laughs) because if we were to talk often about how awful we really feel, Mm -hmm. it would be challenging. But then again, yes, we have to be honest, maybe with select people who know how we feel. But yeah, there's so much like it's not even fake optimism, but like sometimes it is. And and there's just that whole roller coaster. So I'm sure it was a lot. All right, guys, let's take a brief interruption from this conversation with Jessica to talk about my favorite plant-based protein powder. It's pretty much the only plant-based protein powder that I use. And listen up because this is my number one most frequently asked question and why and which one is the safest and which one is the cleanest and which one is SOS free, et cetera. So I'm happy to tell you that New Zest is my absolute favorite and they are now a partner on the podcast. The code BLONDE will give you 20% off of your first purchase, excluding bundles and sale items, but will give you 20% off everything else. And I'm so excited to share that. So I'll tell you why I love New Zest and also what my favorite product of theirs is. So one of the reasons why I absolutely love New Zest protein is because it is highly digestible. In fact, the person who first told me about it is my friend, Bethany, who suffers from a lot of gut health issues. And when she told me it was highly digestible, I knew I had to try it. It's easy on the stomach. There are no common allergens in any of their proteins. It has very low anti-nutritional factors, has absolutely no lectins and very low in phytates, and also has no emulsifiers or gums. So they are tested for peace of mind. They meet all of the most stringent gluten requirements in the world. Every single batch is tested for gluten and regularly tested for soy, dairy, heavy metals, pesticides, and herbicides. So yes, you can trust New Zest. My absolute favorite product is their digestive support protein. I love the chocolate flavor. They have chocolate and vanilla, and this is a special collaboration with my friend Bethany, who I mentioned, who's coming on the podcast soon. And the digestive support protein contains no artificial sweeteners, colors, flavors, gums, or fillers, no soy. And it is filled with something that's so good for your gut called L-glutamine and also has particular probiotics that were added to target gut health. If you're a chocolate person, I highly recommend the probiotic cacao. And if you're a vanilla person like my husband, then you will love the probiotic vanilla. It's lightly sweetened with coconut sugar, so it's not for the sweet tooth. You can always add some maple syrup or some dates into your smoothie to make it sweeter. I think it's sweet enough as it is, but maybe that's just me. So this is perfect for vegans and vegetarians, for athletes, for health conscious individuals, for gut health sufferers, for women, for men, anybody who's gluten free, vegan, plant based or has digestion issues. And to shop, you can go to newzest.us slash the balance blonde. That is N U Z E S T dot US slash the balance blonde and use that code blonde for 20% off of your first purchase. Enjoy. Now back into this episode with Jessica. You know, people ask me a lot how they can raise more awareness for endo, or they'll kind of preface that with, well, well, I don't have a big Instagram following or I'm not a writer. I can't write. And you can raise awareness in so many ways. It doesn't have to be writing a book. It doesn't have to be having an Instagram account. If you want to even be more private about what you're going through, maybe it's just sharing it with your neighbor, or maybe it's sharing it with someone at a party where you're raising awareness in that way. I think that not all of us are designed to completely relive that trauma over and over and over again. And I think that's okay. 
That is so true. And you never know who you would impact by just having a conversation at a party. You could yes. change someone's life. And yes. that's what it's all about. That's such a good, that's such a good point. So what are some of your management tips that you would give people who are suffering? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, you know, the book outlines my five biggest tools and each week we cover one tool. So the tools are knowing your endo. And it's a lot about what we just talked about, about recognizing your symptoms, yet also sort of allowing yourself to separate yourself from them. Week two is stress management. We know through all the research that increased stress can increase pain. So what can we do to get that stress down. And I know you are a meditator, but I don't think everyone is. So if meditation isn't your jam, it could be jigsaw puzzles. It could be walking outside. Like you can find your own, like for me, it's watching nice shows with an edible. Like there's ways that you can kind of calm your body down in whatever way works for you. The third week is food. And I, 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 it's hard because I don't believe there's one endo diet for everyone, just as there's probably not one Lyme diet for everyone. I think that it's about finding your own diet. I do think we can all start with the foundation of looking more towards whole foods, looking more towards plants, and then kind of tweaking it as you go. Because I think it's as much I love plants I have, maybe that's not your jam. And I don't want anyone to feel shamed for that or to feel like, well, gosh, I'm failing because I had some dairy and it didn't actually make me feel bad. Should I still feel bad? Mm -hmm. So it, it's, so we talk a lot about food and that chapter is called good food. And the point of that chapter is finding foods that don't make you feel bad. It's that simple. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, um, and then the fourth week is movement. And that was probably my most favorite chapter to research. And the research that I found just completely blew my mind the connection between movement and less pain. And what's so important to me about that chapter is it's not about running a marathon or doing high intensity HIIT workouts if, if that's not what you're capable of. Because a lot of people with endo were not capable of doing that. So it's foam rolling in bed. It's jumping on a trampoline. It's like doing whatever your body is able to do that day. And it's so much about pacing. It's waking up in the morning and saying, what am I capable of doing today versus this is what I have to do today. And then the fifth week is kinder home and body. And when I say kinder, it's kinder to ourselves and kinder to the planet. And it's really looking at the products that we use. What are we putting up and in our vaginas every month? What is in those products? Because that can impact the way that we feel. Yeah. So Yes. <laughs> oh my God. I can't even believe the stuff I used to use that was just, just so generic, not natural, not organic. Just what we, what we are taught, especially what I was taught, just Tampax, whatever. Yeah. Making that switch has been huge. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is, you know, I've mentioned this before, but I, you know, if you're not able to, which most people can't go out and buy a $2,000 organic natural mattress and you can't sw switch over all of your makeup products, just start with your tampons and pads. Like that is a great first step. And that is an easy swap to make. Switch out your deodorant. That is a very easy swap to that make. And it's, one. yeah, it's not going to break the bank. I mean, it's going to be a little bit more expensive, but you know, another big swap is your cookware. Like, can you swap out that pan that has, you know, the covering to the nonstick covering with a cast iron that's going to last you maybe your whole life. Mm -hmm. So we can make these big swaps that aren't necessarily buying these powders and potions that we see online. It can be very basic. Yeah. And then the fifth, and then the last, it's like kind of a bonus chapter. I talk about pelvic floor therapy, traditional Chinese medicine, lymphatic movement, and CBD and cannabis. And I, and I chose to include those in a bonus chapter because again, depending on where you live, what your budget is, you might not have access to these things. Like you live in California, you can walk out your door and probably find five traditional Chinese medicine practitioners. If you live in a smaller town, you're not gonna be able to have access to that. So I think it's so important to create tools that you can use at home and that you don't need outside help for. 
I completely agree. What you said in there is simplicity. Like it can mm-hmm. really be so basic and so simple. And I think that the more that we get back to the basics and simplicity, the better it is for our health, for our mental health, for our minds. And then if you do, if you do add in, you know, some kind of Chinese medicine practitioner, acupuncturist, that's a wonderful added bonus. And yeah. That's something that has helped me so much. I'm happy that you wrote about it in your book. I found I have this healer, Chinese medicine doctor who is amazing. And she also sees people on Zoom. So you don't just have to live in California to see her. But um, I believe there's, you know, there's somebody out there for everybody if that's something that you're looking for. And it's so nice to have that support. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I mean, for me, you know, I've, I've tried to see there's only like one traditional Chinese medicine person where I live. And that's the kind of thing it's like going on a date. Like sometimes it just doesn't work. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, we're just, you have to vibe with this person. So as much as I would like to do that, it's not really accessible to me right now. So I have a therapist instead, (laughs) which is great. Yeah, You can kind of find someone that is part of your team. And sometimes that team is, comes in and out. Like sometimes I will need her and sometimes I don't. Exactly. Exactly. It ebbs and flows. So what does your daily routine look like with, with everything that you do? You blog, you have your podcast, your Instagram. Well, Jordan, I have to tell you that everything, I just made a brand new website. I took down the blog. I'm not doing the podcast anymore. (laughs) Oh my God. Sorry to not have your up to date. No, I mean, it's no, this just, I just released my last podcast episode last week. So it's fine. You're not totally cool if you're not updated, (laughs) but yeah, I mean, I just have been, I've done my podcast for, I always forget if it's seven or eight years, but I just kind of feeling after getting this book out, I'm feeling kind of a shift into something different. And I'm not exactly sure what that shift is. I got my last advance check. So I'm kind of uh, needing to <laughs> hang on to that as much as I can before I figure this out. But I don't know, it's, it's interesting. I've worked in health and wellness now for about 10 years and I'm kind of feeling like what's next. Mm-hmm. So my day-to-day is, is kind of evolving into, I mean, right now my day-to-day is doing lots of book promo and things like that, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. I don't, I don't know what's next. (laughs) Yeah, I know it's a scary thing to say, (laughs) but I mean, I just have to say, I'm so proud of you. I think it's so cool and so brave to know that when a chapter is closing, that it's okay to close that chapter and to go on to the next thing and create space for the next thing to come in even before you know what it is. And I also feel, I just feel there's a shift in the air for a lot of us who have, who have been doing this for about a decade. And Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's going to look like for, for you or for me or for anyone but that is a shift that has come up so much and I feel the shift. So I'm always inspired by people who are willing to walk away from something successful to, to do something that maybe lights you up more, even before you know what it is. Yeah. And it's hard because, you know, with the podcast, it's probably my most favorite thing I've ever done professionally in my life. I have, you know, I always think it's almost a little selfish. It's like, oh, I want to talk about gut health. Let me find the gut health expert in the world and have them on my podcast and I can ask them whatever I want. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just so is fun. like, it was the ultimate gift for seven or eight. I need to figure out if it's seven or eight years, but letting that go feels like a huge loss in some ways to not be able to connect in that way. And so I think that's what I struggled with the most. It's, um, it's that, but yeah, it's, I, I, I got to a point where I was thinking, I don't really know who I want to interview next. And I think that that was sort of a sign of, okay. Cause after seven or eight years, you can only cover so many topics so many times before you're like, all right, I think, I think we're good on this topic. So true. So true. Yeah. I get that feeling very much. I really do. And you've been podcasting for a really long time, more than 
most people who have a podcast because podcasts really got popular, really popular in the last like three to four years. So yeah, yeah. super early. And it's great. And it's, and it is very wild when you see like Will Arnett and Jason Bateman and all these people popping up with podcasts. And, and I love that there are so many now, but it was also sort of a sign to me that, okay, let's, let's see what's the next adventure. Yeah. Oh, I'm so for sure that it's going to create space for you to do something awesome, to do something that's just going to be different and who knows what it will be. But when, when we have space, I'm such a believer in this, the next right thing comes in and it's going to be good. Whatever it is, it's yeah. going to be good. And you're yeah. homeschooling. You said you're homeschooling your son. That probably well, takes a long time. He is back to school. Oh, okay. Um, so that was yeah. like a quarantine. That was a quarantine. I, you know, unless I'm hiring a professional homeschool teacher, I don't think that will ever happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I will say I, I did a pretty good job. He is reading and doing math. He's in kindergarten. Everything's good, but it's definitely hard to have. I mean, my husband and I swapped every two hours to homeschool. So it was hard to get into the zone a lot. So yeah, he will be, he is back at school and it is much easier. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. So crazy. The first time you're on the podcast, he was a baby. I know. Newborn. I can't believe he's in kindergarten. <laughs> I love that so much. No, he's a, yeah. yeah, he's a cutie, but yeah. So, you know, talk to me in three months, four months after my advance check has run out and I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Yes. We'll see. Maybe you'll be writing another book. Maybe you'll be. I know. I think if I were to, you know, it's so interesting that you say that I, the other day I thought I love writing. I just don't want to do another research driven book because I'm such a sensey empath that reading about sad research just impacts me a lot. So I was like, what if I started fiction? And so I started to kind of type up things and I was having so much difficulty because I would, I was writing from experience, but then I would change it. And I'm like, well, that's not exactly true. It didn't happen that way. And I'm like, wait, you can just lie with fiction. Like this it, fiction is just making up whatever you want. And it's, it's a very different, it's a, it's a really weird mental shift to go from a research driven book and you have to make sure it's so freaking accurate. So and then to be able to just write whatever you want. I so <laughs> I love that. Wow. I love that. I think fiction is so freeing and so fun to write. And I'm, I'm beginning to realize how similar we are. <laughs> that is, that is the direction I hope to move as well. And that's also what I used to do before I ever got into this industry was write fiction. So, Oh yeah. I didn't I, know that. Yeah, that's what I was in grad school for. And then I left grad school for the blog. And it's very funny how things come full circle. Right. I never thought after leaving this master's program for creative writing that I would go back to fiction. But it's been calling me. It's been calling me for a long time. And I agree. It's fun. It's hard because it's it's literally your imagination. It's not, it's not, you know, a lot of fiction is based off of real life because how could it not be but then right. Mary take it take it with your imagination yeah and you know I was on another podcast and we were talking a lot about books and I want we talk so much about what defines a good book because I think that so much we we put a lot of women's writing we call them beach reads or we call them chick lit or whatever you call it and, and they're almost seen as not being as great, right? But to me, a good book is a book that you want to finish. It's like, I, I don't want to go read, you know, a 20 inch book on the Civil War. Like that's not something that makes me interested. That book might be an incredible book, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to maybe explore just writing, just things that are fun. I've been writing about not as much fun things for a while. And it just, you know, as much as a cookbook is fun. I mean, it was born from in some ways being in a sad place. 
Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to explore just weird lies that I'm going to make up. <laughs> I'm so excited. I want to read your fiction. I'm so excited. It's so fun and it's so inspiring. Yeah. I feel the next chapter, the next chapter feels really good for you. I like it Thank a lot. You. Yeah. Thank you. And my dream is to start a caftan company. Cause I feel like when you have you are the caftan queen <laughs> and they are so hard to find. They yeah. are so hard to find. And I want to make them truly for my inflammatory friends. Like there are so it. many of us that can't wear pants. <laughs> yeah, right. That's true. I remember when we met in person in Philadelphia and right for the Good Fest. And well, we met the very first, and oh my gosh, now that you're saying this, we met for the very first time in Chicago at like, we went to Italy together. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I I was wearing the very first caftan I ever bought. And I was like a little bit nervous about it. Cause I'm like, cause I usually wore, you know, pants that hurt my body, but I'm like, it felt weird to wear a caftan in Chicago. Cause it's like freezing cold all the time. (laughs) But, um, but yeah, I remember that. And it just, when you have loose clothes on, when you have an inflammatory condition, it feels freeing. Oh, like totally. you feel free in your body. It's so freeing. Well, that's why I live in like stretchy yoga pants and everything, but a caftan is way more chic. And yes, I remember your caftan in Chicago and I remember it <laughs> in Philadelphia and you always look amazing. So I oh, think that would be such a cool venture for you. And I know I people are know always doing. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, so we'll, um, it's my dream. We'll see, uh, you know, maybe I'll be a caftan wearing fiction writer. Oh, I love <laughs> it. I love it. Oh my God. <laughs> Talking about fiction writing. Yes. It brings, it brings me so much joy. I'm excited. We've got a, maybe we can do a little writing session together one time and get the yeah. flowing. I will tell your audience the, if they are also fiction readers, I just read this book a couple, it was like a couple months ago, the idea of you. And it was a very fun fiction read. Okay. It's not serious. It's not high lit. It's just bananas fun and kind cool. of dirty. And it was okay. great. I'm so happy you said that. What are, what are your other recommendations? I'm always looking for good books. Oh my gosh. I'm reading right now called A, um, a Special Place for Women. And it is also a fiction book that just came out. And I think you would really dig it a lot because it's about a, um, a woman's club in New York that this reporter is trying to take down. And it's like, it's kind of like, you know, a little bit wingish, but then with an added, like we're kind of spiritual. So it's kind of like mocking that a little bit, which I'm fine with. (laughs) And, um, I like that's like that. Yeah. So all I read, if, if it, it feels rom com or just kind of like a light thriller. It's like my jam. So cool. that's all I read. I don't read yeah. anything. You I like the read, light stuff. Yeah. Cause I used to have to read so much serious stuff for the podcast. And then yeah. I'm just like, when I'm off, man, I want to be off. Mm-hmm. So oh. why don't I do this? Can I send you, I'll send you a list of like five books that I've read that are just fun, light ones. And we can include them in the show notes. Yeah. Okay, okay cool. Yes. Okay. That, that cool. is a gift for me and a gift for the audience. <laughs> okay. I love that. Okay. Where are my alcohol-free friends? I have such a fun brand to tell you about, which is Groovy. Groovy is my favorite alcohol-free beverage company. And I love them so much because when you're sipping on Groovy, you feel like you are a part of the party, but you are not having any alcohol, which is incredible. So I'm such a fan of their Groovy Bubbly Rosé, which is gluten-free, alcohol-free, of course, and only has 60 calories per bottle. I'm not a calorie counter, but I do think that's a cool little fact to add in there. I love how it tastes. It's fruity. It's light pink. It's pretty. Tiny little effervescent bubbles float up to the top while you're drinking it. And this is what I will be sipping all summer long. They also have their groovy dry secco, which is their prosecco made from wine grapes. And then they have all sorts of groovy beers 
So if you're a beer person, they have IPA, pale ale, stout, etc. My husband is such a fan because yes, I got most of my family on the alcohol-free train. I also love that Groovy is a family-owned business. It first launched in Denver in May 2019, so they're still new. Founded by two siblings, they're a small family and friends startup, and their aim is to bring some life, love, and tasty options to the alcohol-free space. They have a beautiful mission, which is a world where we don't feel the need to consume alcohol at every social gathering, a world where everyone can feel included regardless of their beverage of choice, and their mission is to help people be healthy and stay social one drink at a time. I personally, I think a lot of you guys know this, haven't had alcohol in almost three years. And before that, I really had only had alcohol probably five times in the last five years before that. So I am such a fan of how the alcohol-free space is becoming more trendy, more popular. It's not just me anymore, or it felt like it was just me, but I know so many people are on this train, whether you're sober or sober curious, or you're just interested in having a dry month. I know you will love Groovy. The other cool thing is you can use the code BLONDE, B-L-O-N-D-E, and BLONDE will get you 10% off of all things Groovy at getgroovy.com, which is spelled G-E-T-G-R-U-V-I.com, and use that code BLONDE, B-L-O-N-D-E, for a discount. Enjoy. And now let's head back into this episode with Jessica. All right. I want to ask you some of the rapid fire questions. Yeah, please. Everyone, do you know your sun rising and moon signs? I don't. Oh, I, I know birth- that I'm a I know that I'm a Capricorn. That's all I know. Oh, when's your birthday? January 7th. Okay. Oh, that's my niece's birthday. Okay. Does that I I, I know that that makes me kind of assertive. I'll say that in a nice way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Capricorns are assertive. You're an earth sign. Capricorns are loyal, very smart, very driven, assertive, sometimes serious. Not all Capricorns, of course. It really depends on the rest of your chart. I think Capricorns are awesome. Okay. And what are the things about Capricorns that are sort of like, yo, you need to kind of watch that? Mm, the driven they, part? Well, they can come off a little intense, maybe a uh-huh. little bit arrogant sometimes yeah yeah (laughs) a little too serious which I don't know if that's how you are but um yeah a little too serious and maybe Capricorns could let themselves have a little bit more fun there we go yes okay and so how do I know what that other thing is what did you say the rising yeah your rising and your moon that would require your birth time and then you would just look that up do you know what time you're born Okay. Ruby Warrington. I'm friends with her. Do you yes. Know, she yes. had me do this one time and I completely forgot what they were. So oh, yeah. I, I'll have to look this up. Okay. Oh yeah. Let me know. We can okay. always include it in the intro. <laughs> okay. I'm obsessed with astrology. So <laughs> okay. um, birth time, birthplace. And then you probably then are not sure of your human design because that also. I do. I do know human design. Oh, okay. I, I had a human design expert on my podcast. Um, I am a something manifester. Oh, a manifesting generator. Yes. That's Ah, it. Manifesting generator. Oh, you're totally a manifesting generator. (laughs) A multi-hyphenate, the person who does a lot of things and has energy to get it all done. And And so, you know, the thing that's some, it's like, I don't believe in this stuff, but then when I start talking about it with experts, I'm like, oh, this stuff kind of I don't know. It's like, as much as sometimes I don't believe in it, I do feel like it gives people a better understanding. I don't know. It gives them almost permission to be themselves more. It does. It does give permission. That's probably my favorite thing about it. And it's so much more science-based than you would think. It's, Mm -hmm. it's literally based on, you know, where the planets were when you were born. And then human design is based off of a whole other system, but I've never met anyone who is not living, who is not an accurate description of their human design or their birth chart with astrology. Cause obviously not all Capricorns are the same. Not all Libras are the same, but when you look at someone's full chart, it really tells you who a person is. It's, okay. it's, it's awesome. <laughs> I'll have to look that up. Cause uh, yeah, Ruby, cause I, Ruby is such a great friend and I, 
she made me do that. And I can't even remember what it was. Yeah. Ruby's <laughs> awesome. Ru- Ruby and I are both cancer moons and okay. this similarity of the moon sign is very much your emotions and, and very indicative of someone's personality. So I okay. do feel a connection to her with our, ca- with our cancer moon. Okay. And she's cool. I mean, I love yeah, her. She's so cool. Yeah. Sober, curious. She's yeah. so inspiring in that way. So, okay. So uh, coffee or tea? Neither. Water. Oh, water. Love it. Uh, I don't that- like coffee or tea. But I, although I did just find a sparkling tea that I've been loving. This brand, Mina. Oh, I don't think I've heard of it, but very cute branding. It yeah. looks good. Yeah. It's a, I'm a weirdo. I don't like the taste of coffee and I hate hot beverages. <laughs> I get that. I'm an iced beverage person, yeah. but okay. I love that. Well, water is good that you're always hydrated. <laughs> morning. Are you a morning person or a night person? Night, a hundred percent night. I like to work out in the morning, but I feel like I like get into my groove at night. Mm-hmm. Who's your inspiration? Oh my gosh. Okay. This might sound so cheesy, but this is the first thing that came to my head. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Let's hear it. I think today my inspiration is my partner, Dan, just because he is the most positive and everything's going to be okay person I've ever met in my entire life. And I, I mean, I am, um, I'm a messy person. Like right now I've got clothes all over the floor. <laughs> I've got, I, you know, I, I'm like put together in my work life and, and he is so gentle and kind about just, you know, if he was that way, I'd be like, clean up that stuff. He's like, Hey, do you think that if you get a chance later today, you might be able to pick up those clothes off the floor? It's like, yeah, it's just a nice way of saying oh, it. I know that's so sweet. That so, yeah. sounds awesome. You guys are a good balance for you. Yeah. Yourself. So I think today it's I'm inspired by him just because he uh he just makes life more fun. I love that. What's his sign? When's his birthday? Oh, his birthday is May 29th. And I do feel like I don't know what that is. What is that? He's a Gemini. Gemini. But I do think I've like looked up what a Gemini is and I don't really think it's completely accurate with him. So what are some things about Geminis? Well, so Geminis are an air sign. Nice Mm -hmm. compliment to your earth. And well, Geminis have that notorious dual personality. That's, you know, it's the twin sign. So they have their highs and lows, dual personality. That's not always accurate, of course. Yeah. There's some very level-headed Geminis. And then Geminis have that stereotype of being really emotional and sensitive and also super creative. I I love all the Geminis in my You yeah, see, all of that is not true except for the creative thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, maybe his rising whatever is more accurate. For sure. Sometimes it is. When you look at the whole chart, when you're like, oh, but he's a Gemini with Virgo all over his chart, then you're like, okay, that makes sense. Okay. Um, Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I get it. There's, (laughs) there's Geminis that fit the stereotype and then there's Geminis who totally don't. But then my son fits. So his birthday is October 3rd. And I don't know what sign that is. He's a Libra. Libra. But I did look up Libra and he does match the Libra things. Yeah. Libras are pretty special. I will say <laughs> I love Libras, not just because I am a Libra, but I get along with Libras and I have not met many Libras who don't fit the sign. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why. I mean, it's a And thing. if no one, if, if someone's listening that doesn't know what those are, what are the Libra things? Yeah. So Libra characteristics, we strive for balance. The the Mm -hmm. sign itself is the symbol of the scales. Mm -hmm. And so we're usually pretty even keeled, pretty calm, pretty, we're very loyal Mm -hmm. friendships, you know, relationships, friendships, people are super important to us, whether you're a very extroverted person or not, doesn't matter. But like the relationships really kind of define you back to yourself. Mm -hmm. And we are all about loyalty, all about justice, equality. That's a really big part of Libras, which can show up in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And um, 
just pretty calm. You know, we're not a fire sign, we're an air sign. So we are up there, we are kind of floaty, very creative. Mm -hmm. We don't do that well with a lot of rules and a lot of structure. Yeah. No structure. (laughs) (laughs) And and I really feel Libra because I have it all over my chart. And yeah, Libra's, you know, I like to think Libra's are, are easy to get along with. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, he's very easy to get along with. He sounds so cool. I was reading, I always read in people's books, their acknowledgements. It's, uh, it's the favorite. first thing I read. It's the first <laughs> thing I read too. I read your acknowledgements multiple times. I just think it's so fun. And your note to your son was so cute. Like he knows the word endo- endometriosis yeah. and he's only a little kid. It's so important to me for him to know what periods are and just to normalize them. Like he, we do this thing on the first day of my period where we get to watch shows in bed together. Cause there's a lot of days on my period that I'm not on the first day, I'm not feeling like my ultimate best. So it's kind of, we just know that that's what we're going to do on the first day of my period. And I don't know, it makes me kind of happy that it's not like a weird secret in our house that I'm on my period. Like yeah. and there's even been like a, there was like a strawberry stain on our bed and he was like, mama, it's a period blood. And I was like, no, it's a strawberry. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it's just, so cute. <clears throat> no, I like he's that. So he cool. just knows, you know? Yeah. Oh, he's going to grow up. If he is with a woman when he's older and he gets all that stuff, that is literally such a gift. Like yeah. a lot of boys, especially if they don't have sisters or anything, they grow up and they do not know what it is, what it means when you're on your period, what it, and they've been conditioned to think that it's weird or gross or, you know, I mean, there are adult ass men in their forties and fifties that you bring up the word period and they're like, Oh, I don't want to know. It's like, don't grow up, dude. I know (laughs) it's so dumb. Honestly, I think it's so cool how you're raising him. That is super inspiring for, I mean, all the mothers listening. That's so cool. And yeah. it should be, it should be that way. So yeah, so so he's, he's a special dude that yeah. knows about periods. <laughs> so cool. So adorable. Well, where can everyone find you? Uh, you can find me at Jessica Mernan. And then if you are an endoer, I call you a friendo, friends with endo. You can go, to, I'm on Instagram at know your endo. And then I also have the knowyourendo.com website and we have a newsletter and then the book. I feel if you have endo, if you know someone that has endo, one of the greatest things is when people message me that say, I bought this friend, I bought this book for my friend that has endo because half of endo I feel is feeling seen and heard. And when you let your friend know, like I'm acknowledging that this is a real thing for you, it's the coolest thing ever. So even if you don't have endo, check out the book, send it to your friend. It could mean, it could just change their whole life. I think, and not saying that the book is going to change their life. I just mean like change their whole life because they feel seen. seen. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I I have a friend in mind who I'm going to, who I'm going to get one for. And I'm so excited to give it to her. It's full of so much wisdom and so much research and everybody listening, you guys got to get your hands on it. It's, it's wonderfully done. Yes. I'm so proud of you. And I just can't wait to see all the things that you continue to do next. I'm so inspired. (sighs) Thanks. Well, maybe next time on the pod, we'll talk about, um, my just like, rom-com slutty sex book, you know? Oh my God, please. I cannot (laughs) wait to read it. Get that written. And I literally can't wait. (laughs) Thank you so much, Jordan. Yes. Thank you. All right, guys. I hope you love this episode with Jessica. It was such a fun one to record. She is so cool and such a good friend of mine through the years. And it was just really fun to catch up with her. The last time we caught up was way too long ago. We live far away from each other. We've got a lot going on. And it was just so fun and so cool to chat with her and to hear more about her life and what she's up to right now and all the changes she's making talk about Bravo with her and of course talk about her new book Know Your Endo. So definitely check her out and support that book. Follow her on Instagram at Jessica Mernan. And also wanted to remind you I have that exciting free live workshop that I am hosting 
coming this Thursday. It is my only live event of the year. It's going to be online and I'm going to be introducing you to the pillars of the Celestial Diet and Lifestyle Program, which is a way of life that came through to me, gosh, at the end of last year. But it's a way of life that I've been living for about three years. So based in a plant-based way of life, but so much more all about spiritual awakening, The seven pillars from detox to ascension are all going to be covered. We are also going to do a live channeling and a live meditation. So it's kind of going to be like a sneak peek from my celestial lifestyle program that is also launching at the end of the week. And I'm so excited. So the link for that is in the show notes. You can also stay tuned for all the info to be on my Instagram and basically everywhere. Also on the blog, because I'm going to be so excited to talk about it. And also thank you to our fabulous sponsors, Pure Synergy, Code Blonde 20 for those amazing vitamins and supplements. New Zest, my favorite, favorite plant-based protein powder company, Code Blonde for a discount. And Groovy, the number one alcohol-free brand that I am loving, Code Blonde for a discount there. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you, of course, for every one of you who is here listening. Thank you for supporting the show for the last almost five years. If you remember the last time Jessica Mernan was on the show, then you definitely have been here for a long time and you're going to have to send me a message or an email telling me that so that I can thank you for having been here for that long. And if you feel inspired to rate and review the show on iTunes, send me a screenshot to jordanatthebalancebond.com so I can thank you personally and send you my free yoga ebook as a gift. Now, Without further ado, I will let you get into your day or your evening or wherever you are. Sending you so much love. Hope to see you at the live event on Thursday and we'll talk soon.